Hi, good morning, everyone. My name is Sadiq. I'm working for Red Hat as a technical support engineer, primarily concentrating on cloud and virtualization. OpenStack is one of the products that I regularly work with. Within the OpenStack, I give more attention to work on problems related with Nova, Neutron, Cinder, and other core components. Today, I'm going to talk about how Neutron builds network topology for your material application. So agenda for today, I would first give you a brief overview of Neutron. Then I would explain what are the different native components within the Neutron and what are the different external components that Neutron depends on. And I would explain what is a network namespace in general and, uh, and, and how Neutron uses network namespace to create application topology. So without understanding what is a network namespace, it may not be able to follow my presentation completely. Then I would explain how a network topology of an example multi tier application looks like and what are the steps building in, in that network topology. Then I would explain, uh, then I would try to correlate that application topology with Neutron. That means what happens inside the Neutron when we try to build the application topology. When we create the network, what actually happens inside the Neutron to create that network for us? When we create a router, when we create a load balancer, when we create a firewall, what actually happens inside Neutron to make it possible, make that possible for us. Then I would explain why am I doing this talk here, what was the motive behind this. So Neutron overview and components, most of you may not need an overview of Neutron, but for people who are new to Neutron, let me just spend five minutes for them. Neutron is a project within the OpenStack that delivers networking as a service. What does networking as a service mean? All of you here will be aware of how difficult it is to build network topology for your application using conventional hardware. You need to worry about physical switches. You need to worry about physical routers or software routers. You need to worry about physical load balances, firewalls, or software load balances or firewalls. You should know how to configure them. You are responsible for the long-term maintenance, security, and management of all these devices. So it's also expensive because most of the devices or resources that you are going to provision may, may remain underutilized most of the time. And it's also time consuming because you have to spend a lot of time from planning to implementation. When it comes to networking as a service, we are going to abstract all these into software where the user is going to get an interface to build network topology for his application without worrying about underlying hardware or infrastructure requirements. So this is also easy and convenient. This is also quick. If you know what are the network details, what are the requirements for your application topology, you just need to collect those details and uh, uh, submit, submit all those details to a form and click uh, apply. So once you do submit all this into Neutron API, you should have your network's provision or network topology provision within a minute or two, uh, depending upon how complex is the network topology. So, Neutron is responsible to create, manage, remove networks, routers, load balancers, firewalls, VPNs. So we are going to look at how we are going to explore how Neutron, going to, Neutron is going to achieve this. So as I explained earlier, Neutron has different native components and different external components that Neutron depends on. All these components are going to work together to deliver networking as a service. So let's take a look at what are those different components and how do they work together to deliver networking as a service. So these are the components that we have inside Neutron. We have a Neutron API server, which basically provides an interface for users and services to interact with Neutron. We have Neutron DSCP agent, which basically facilitates DSCP IP addressing for, uh, for uh, tenant private networks. So uh, when a network is configured to have DSCP IP addressing, DSCP agent comes into picture to, to create, uh, DS, to spawn DSCP server service for the tenant private network. It's also responsible to manage, uh, so when a user makes a change into the tenant private network, then DSCP agent makes that change into the DSCP server service. We also have Neutron Layer 3 agent. Neutron Layer 3 agent is basically responsible to enable routing between the tenant private networks or between a tenant private network or an external network as well as floating IP management. We also have Neutron uh, load balancer as a service agent. It basically helps us to, to provision a load balancer or in front of a, and form a cluster behind the load balancer using instances from a tenant private network. We also have a Neutron firewall as a service agent. 
is basically responsible to, uh, to help us to create rules and firewall rules and policies and apply those firewall rules and policies on thin and virtual routers. Uh, we also have Neutron uh, VPN agent. Suppose there are two different OpenStack sites uh, connected through internet, and there is a tenant who has private network on both OpenStack sites. It's possible if Neutron VPN agent basically helps the tenant to connect those two networks together through the internet. It has two advantages. There is a direct connection between the uh, two private network, and the connection through the internet is secure by creating a VPN tunnel. And we also have Neutron uh, Layer 2 agent, which basically helps us uh, to manage flow of uh, tenant private, pri private networks, packet flow of our tenant private networks through a shared physical device. And Layer 2 agent is also responsible to manage the flow of packets within a compute node or within a network node. So all these components are going to communicate with each other using an advanced message queuing protocol. It can be QPID or RabbitMQ or any other service that complies with MQP. So why I'm saying this, because in later slides, I'm going to use all these components, and I'm going to explain how these components are going to work together to create topology for our application. So there are some external components also within the Neutron. This is not the complete list of external components. So we have a network namespace. We have OpenView switch. We have DNS mask, which is basically responsible to create the DSCP server for a tenant private network. Uh, we, we use uh, LibreSwan or OpenSwan for VPN agent purpose. We also use Keep LFD to enable high, uh, high availability between tenant virtual routers. And we also use HA proxy or any other soft, uh, load balancing uh, software for load balancing service. We also use IP tablets firewalls for, uh, to create uh, firewall as a service. We also, uh, we also use DNAT and DESNAT for floating IP management. We also use a lot of uh, network user space components, kernel, and a lot to depend on the underlying operating system. So what is a network namespace, and what is a namespace? So a namespace allows isolation of a group of resources it, to its own space. And all the processes within that namespace, all the resources within that namespace runs with the illusion that they are the only processes within the system. So this can happen. Without the namespaces, they are not knowing each other, without creating any conflict, and while they you still use the same parameters like IP address, port number, sockets, or, or any other parameters. So if you take a look at the picture that is on your left side, you will see that we have two, three namespaces, namespace one, namespace two, and namespace three. All of them are going to run uh, HTTP process, listening on the same IP address, having the same port number, same interface names, and they can run each other and serve different websites. So this is the basic concept behind namespace. And grouping network-related resources in such a way forms network namespace. So we are going to use a network namespace extensively when we try to build our network topology. So coming back into the, so we have been talking about neutron components, what is the function of each component, and how do we physically deploy these components? So we have, ideally an OpenStack deploy, deployment should have a set of controller nodes, a set of uh, network nodes, and a bunch of compute nodes. The set of controller nodes basically runs the API services, um, uh, database service, and as well as the message queuing service. And the cent uh, set of uh, network nodes are going to basically run DSCP agent and all other neutron agents. Co all the compute nodes are going to run compute-related services as well as neutron layer 2 agent. Our focus today here is on network nodes and compute nodes. And we are going to look at what is going to happen inside this, this compute node and network node when we try to build network topology for our application. So this is a brief overview of Neutron. Let's get into application network topology. So, so there is a tenant, tenant, tenant X. Tenant X, and there are two OpenStack sites, OpenStack site A and OpenStack site B. And the tenant A is going to build a multi-tier application that spans both OpenStack sites. So let's take a look at what, what is the network topology of this multi-tier application on site A. So when we come to site A, the, the, ten, the tenant has three-tier application where he has a web server cluster, and he has a, an application server cluster, he has a database server cluster. 
And due to security reasons, all these clusters cannot run on the same network. They need to be isolated to its own private network. So this means the tenant has to create three private network on site A, and the application server and the database server need to be connected together, and the application server and web server network also need to be connected together, as well as the web server network and the external network. To connect, the, connect them together, we need to create the routers and apply that, those routers between those two those networks. So when we apply a router, this means every, all network communication between those two networks should be by default allowed. So we don't want to do that, and we want to only allow legitimate traffic between those two networks. So to make sure that we are passing only legitimate traffic, we need to create firewall rules and policies and that allows only the legitimate traffic and apply those firewall rules and policies on the routers. So, for the, so we do this by creating a firewall and applying that firewall on the router. And we also have a load balancer in web server network that sits in front of the web server cluster. So we need to make sure that we have to provision a load balancer. So let's take a look at what, what happens on site B. The site B basically has just a single network, a remote network that I want to call. So the remote network is basically responsible to send some backups or any other data from the, uh, from the uh, web server network so that he has a replication of all the data on the remote side. So this means the remote side has just one network, one private network that is cre created by the ten tenant, and there is a router that connects that private network into the external network, and basically the, these two sites are geographically separated, and we need to make sure that the web server network and the remote net private network is connected together uh, by creating a VPN tunnel. This is to make sure that the communication between those, th these two networks are secure, and there is a direct connection between those, these two networks. So this is uh, the example application topology that we are going to build. So we are going to do two, two things. We are going to look at how Neutron is, what are the steps to build it, and what happens inside Neutron when we try to build this application topology. So. So how to build it? There are multiple ways to build it. You can either use uh, Horizon dashboard, you can use CLI, you can build it via API, and you can use you can create a heat template which basically uses API in the back in the back end and build it all at once. So the choice is yours. And during this presentation, I want to stick to using uh, using Horizon dashboard because uh, that is the f easiest way, and that may be the first thing everyone wants to start with. So before starting to build, let's take a look at how the, actually the neutron topology that we have. So we have two network nodes for high, av high availability purpose, and all the neutron agents are going to run on those two network nodes. And neutron layer 2 agent has already created, we are in the OVS bridge, it's basically a centralized location where all packets arrive, and then th those packets are redistributed to different entities. Then these two, net two network nodes are connected together using a tunnel network through BRTAN, and these two net network nodes are also connected to the internet using BR EX OVS bridge. So this is the network topology we have up front, and we are going to look at when we do each action, when we try to create a network, what happens in the inside this neutron topology. So the first step, by the way, we have to create three networks on site A and one network on site B, and we need to make sure that we are going to create instances and the database related instances are added into the database private network and application server instances are added into the application network and like that. So the steps uh, to create a network is straightforward. We just uh, you must know what are the details of the network, like network name, uh, network ID, and uh, gateway IP address, and optionally allocation pool or DNS server. Once you have all these details, you are going to log into Horizon, and you are going to uh, click on Create Network. And once you enter all the details and you create the network, you have the network created. So what actually happens inside Neutron when you try to create this network and start an instance to that network? When you create the network, nothing happens. It just updates the database. 
And background things happen only when you create your first instance to that network. So uh, suppose we are going to create an instance to that network. Basically, uh, Neutron API server is going to tell the DSCP agent to provision that network, provision, that net, uh, provision the DSCP services for that network. The DSCP agent basically create a namespace for each network on both network nodes. That means we have three networks, and we are going to have six namespaces and two namespaces for each network. This is because we have configured our DSCP agent to, uh, with DSCP agents per network so that it spawns uh, two, diff uh, two copies of the DSCP server services for each tenant private network for high availability. So once the namespace is created, then Neutron DSCP agent is going to work with layer, three agent, layer two agent to create an interface to that namespace and attaches that interface into the BR in the OBS bridge, and then it tags that interface using a VLAN ID that's specific to that network. This VLAN ID is basically used to, to segregate the packet traffic inside a network node or a compute node for, for, a, for a tenant private network. So once this interface is created, then the interface is configured with using an IP address from the tenant private network. The IP address is basically going to be the DSCP server IP address for that specific tenant network. We are going to have two different IP addresses, one IP, one IP address on node one, one IP address on network node two. So once the IP address is configured, then the ACP agent is going to spawn a DNS mask process exclusively for that network to each namespace. The DNS mask process is basically a duplicate copy that is what is going to run on each network node. So, so how the high availability works both the DSCP server service for a tenant network is going to respond for DSCP discover from the instances, which is running the DSCP client. And once, uh, and both the DSCP server will respond with the DSCP offer. And that the, the DSCP client is basically responsible to accept only one of the DSCP offer and drop the other DSCP offer. And it then sends a DSCP request to, specifically to that DSCP server. So even if one of the network nodes goes down, the other network node st would still be able to respond to DSCP requests. So this is what happens inside uh, uh, DSCP. So after provisioning the DSCP server, we need to make sure that the layer two traffic for the tenant private network is flowing through the network node. To make sure that we are going to add a flow into the BR turn on the network node, that translates the internal VLAN ID for that network to external VLAN ID or external GRE or VXLAN tunnel ID. So once this flow is there, then the packets from the DSCP server is free to flow outside the network through the physical share, shared physical device. So let's take a look at what happens actually inside the compute node at this time when you start an instance. For each interface that an instance has, it's going to be attached into a, into a Linux bridge, and the Linux bridge is actually attached into, into connected to the BR in OBS bridge using a patch PR cable. And the end of the patch PR cable that is connected to the BR in has a VLAN tag associated with it. So when the packet reaches the QVO X end, the packet is going to get a VLAN header added into that. From there, the packet is going to, to be moved down to the BR tun tunnel bridge and once the packet is on the BR turn tunnel bridge, then uh, there is an obvious flow inside the BR turn that basically translates the internal VLAN ID to external tunnel ID or G uh, GRA ID. Last. Can I have questions last? So once this is done, then the packet is going to move out to the DSCP server for DSCP request or for any other requests uh, through the shared physical device. So we have the DSCP server up and running. The next step is basically to create a router and connect networks using the router. So the steps to create the router is straightforward. We just create, uh, click create router and you have the router ready. And you click on the router and make sure that the correct networks are attached into the router. So I don't want to spend a lot of time here because this is self-explanatory and, and this, this, the interface tells how to do that. So basically, I'm going to look at how, what happens inside Neutron 
when when you try to uh, provision routers to net. So I'm going to first take uh, the neutron routers that's going to attach the web server network and application server network and uh, the application server network and database server network. So Neutron API server sends a request into the Neutron Layer 3 agent to provision the routers, and Neutron Layer 3 agent basically going to create a namespace for each router on both network nodes. So once the namespace is created, then Neutron Layer 3 agent is going to work with Neutron Open Switch agent to create an interface to create an interface into that namespace, and the interface is tagged with uh, VLAN ID. So then the, the interface is configured with an IP address from a pre-configured network, which is expected to uh, pass through the traffic, VRRP traffic between, between those two namespaces. So once the interface is configured with this IP address, it's also going to be tagged with an internal VLAN tag. It's also going to be attached into the BR in the OVS bridge. And once, once the interface is up, we have the VRRP traffic moving between two, these two namespaces. Then again, Neutron uh, Layer 3 agent is going to work with Neutron Open Vswitch agent to create two other interfaces. And one of them, one of them is expected to hold the pre default gateway IP for one of the network, and the other one is expected to hold the default gateway IP for the other network. This is going to happen on both network nodes. There is no IP address configured right now, just the interface is created and attached to the namespace. So once this is finished, then layer three agent is going to create a keep LAVD configuration file with the details of the gateway for each private network and on what interface it needs to be configured and all the details and what is that VRRP traffic interface and things like that. Then once the configuration file is created by the layer three agent, it's, just, it's going to spawn a keep LAVD process using that configuration file. And once the keep LAVD process is spawned, one of the namespace is going to, to be elected as the master node or master for the virtual router. And that keep LAVD process is going to bind the default gateway IP for that private network to both the interfaces. And that would start listening. And, and through using that namespace, that act namespace on the active master node, we are going to enable routing between the virtual uh, networks. So once the network node goes down, the VRRP traffic should stop happening, and the other node would understand that the master node has died, and it would take over the IP address and act as the active, uh, active router for, for, the, for that router. So this is actually what happens when we create a router. So we have created two routers. That means we have two namespaces configured like this. So the next thing is to uh, configure, uh, create load balancer for web servers. So when we create a load balancer, we need to, be, uh, we need to know we it need a health monitor so that it can check the, sta the health status of the backend nodes. It also need, um, uh, we also need to create a pool and attach a VIP to the pool. The VIP is going to be the IP address where, where the load balancer service is going to listen. And we also need to specify what are the backend members that is going to going to serve the the web the cluster services. So once we do this, so we do have the load balancer provisioned, and we have formed a cluster behind the load balancer using nodes from the private network. So let's take a look at what actually happens inside Neutron when we when we provision a load balancer in front of a cluster. So the first thing that happens is Neutron uh, API server. Uh, sends a message into the load balancer as a service agent to provision the load balancer. And there is no high availability for load balancer instances right now. So it's going to choose uh, one of the network node to spawn the uh, namespace for that, specifically for that load balancer instance. Then once, uh, once the namespace is created, the LBAS agent is going to work with the layer two agent to create an interface and to, to that namespace and to configure that interface using the VIP that we specified while, while provisioning the load balancer. And once that is finished, it's going to be tagged using an internal VLAN tag ID for that private network. And later, uh, after that, load balancer agent is going to create an haproxy.cfg configuration file that explains what is the VIP and, what's the, and what port the service on the VIP is going to listen. 
and what are the backend nodes for, uh, th th that is going to deliver the service within the cluster, and on what port uh, the backend nodes are listening for the service. So once we have, once the Elbas agent creates the configuration file, it's going to spawn an HA proxy process using that configuration file. Once the HA proxy process is spawned, then we have our load balancer ready and listening for the VIP. So this is actually what happens inside Neutron when we try to create a load balancer. So uh, we, uh, earlier we explained how to connect those private networks together, and now we are going to explain how we, we are going to connect the um, uh, web server network to the external network. So basically the steps are the same to create the router, but instead of adding bo attaching both the network as an interface, you need to set a gateway for the uh, router using the external network. Once you do that, you will be able to provision uh, floating IPs, create floating IPs, and associate floating IPs with instances. So we are going to look at when we create, when we connect web server network, and external networks together, what actually going to happen inside Neutron. So uh, the first thing, we are going to, so we are going to create a router and connect to the, using that router to the external network. The first thing that happens, just like I explained when we provisioned the other router, is going to create two namespaces and going to configure the interfaces uh, for keep LAD traffic, VRRP traffic, then it's going to create an other two interfaces to, to, to configure the default gateway IP address from the external network as well as from the web server network. So the only difference here is that um, uh, one of the interface is going to also carry the floating IPs. So the floating IPs are basically configured as, a, as an IP alias on, on, on that IP address. So if you have 10 IP addresses, then we have uh, floating IPs and we have 10 IP aliases configured on that interface. So this is the only difference when we come to, uh, when, when we come to connecting a private network to external network. And for the floating IP management, there is also a DNAT and a SNAT rule inside the namespace that translates the floating IP back and forth to the net private network. So now uh, let's go ahead and create a firewall. So when we create a firewall, uh, we first need to create a firewall rule that specifies what services need to be allowed between, between the private network. If you need to allow database services on what port the database is running. And you are, then once you allow all the services, and you are going to create a lot of rules, and you are going to create a policy using those rules, and you are going to use those policies to create a firewall. So once you create a firewall, so the steps are three steps, create, uh, uh, rules, create a policy using those rules, and uh, create firewalls using those policies. Once you do that, let's take a look at what actually happens inside Neutron. There are no namespaces created or anything like that when you create a firewall. So this is actually going to be applied on existing virtual routers. So we already have namespaces created for them. And when we create a firewall, here, we are going to have, the, uh, we are going to apply related IP tables rules. All the rules that we created are going to be translated into, into corresponding IP tables rules. And those IP tables rules are going to be applied in the namespace between the two interfaces. And once the IP tables rules are there, the interfaces are going to route only uh, based, on the, based on those rules. So let's take a look at how do we create a VPN and how do we basically, uh, what happens inside Neutron when we create a private uh, VPN? So to create a VPN, we have to first create an internet key exchange policy. And once we create the internet key exchange policy, we have to use an IPsec policy using that IKE policy. Then later, we are going to use, uh, create a VPN service using those two details. And once we finish, once we do that, then we are basically going to create a site-to-site -site connection. So uh, here we have a site A and site B, and on site A we are going to create a connection to site B, specifying what is the what is the actual uh, gateway external gateway IP for the site B, and what is the private network behind that gateway. On site B we are also going to create uh, create uh, a site-to-site -site connection to site A, where we specify what is the gateway IP on the site A and what is the uh, 
uh, private network behind that that need to be connected together. So once we create the site to site connection on both ends, what happens? Insert neutron. So we are going to create a VPN tunnel between the web server network as well as on the remote network. And once we do that, we also we already have uh, on both network nodes. We already have uh, uh, the Q router namespace corresponding to that virtual router running up and running. So on that namespace, we are basically going to spawn an open swan or libre swan process using a configuration file which explains what is the remote network, what is the uh, uh, private network and gateway IP for the remote network. So we are going to run this open swan process on both site A and site B. So once we have this running, then the, 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 this process that actually runs inside the namespace is going to capture requests for the remote private network and encapsulate that packet and send it to the gateway on the remote site. So once the gateway on the remote site accepts that uh, request, it understands this is a tunnel traffic and it removes the encapsulation and sends the packet into the, into the uh, private network that, that sits behind the gateway. So this is actually what happens inside the VPN agent. So, so this is all I have uh, uh, to explain to you what actually how, how Neutron builds network topology for this example multi-tier application. There can be a lot of different ways to create your application and there are a lot of, so it, it differs from deployment to deployment. So where did I do this talk? Just one minute. This is the example multi tier application topology that we have created using Neutron. And basically, if you look inside Neutron, this is what actually happened. If you are going to use a conventional hardware, you are going to do all these things individually. You are going to do this on firewall. You are going to have a load balancer, physical load balancer. You are going to do this manually. And all these are abstracted in the software, and you get a way to provision this topology within a minute or less than a minute. So this really brings the advantage of Neutron and how we can use this to provision topology for our application. So that's all I have today. And thank you for listening. And if you have any questions, please stick to the example network topology that I have explained here. Because there are different ways to build a, an application topology. So it takes a lot of time to figure out if you are going to talk about a different topology. Uh, thank you very much for your explanation. Uh, I want to, uh, is this uh, technology, uh, can, I, can I use uh, this environment uh, on obvious previous version of OpenStack and Juno Ice House? I mean, question is clear, not really uh, clear. You, you are asking this whether? Is a, uh, this uh, explanation is uh, specific of Kilo or not? So I used Juno for to, to create this. So if there isn't anything new that is that came up in Kilo, I may not have covered it. I was sticking to Juno to, to prepare these slides. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. Yeah, yeah, obviously. So I explained to you there are different ways to build it. So if you use a heat template to build it, if you have prepared the heat template, you will get it in a minute or less than a minute. The manual way is for us to learn things, how to build it, not specifically to build a production. If you have to, to provision 100 instances of this topology, I mean, the manual way of configuring this does not, it's not scalable. So we use a heat template or we use a script or anything like that directly hit the API and get it done for us. Okay. So if I use a script or something like that, it's not possible for you to understand what happened in the background. Just get finished in a minute or two. Thank you. Okay. Sorry, I didn't get the last sentence. Yeah, definitely you, have, you can have more than two network nodes. So you can have three network nodes if you want. And if you want three copies of the DSCP instances to be running, 
that you are going to configure the ACP agents per network is equal to three. And also, there is a configuration for, uh, for uh, virtual routers, whether you want two instances of the virtual router to be running, or you want three instances of the virtual router to be running, or more than three. And you can have uh, the agents also running active-active on all the three nodes. So it's all what communicates together using the message queue. So who, which agent gets the message first, it, it's going to execute that. So, so it's possible to have more than three nodes also. Yep. Michael Delzer, American Airlines. Um, what's the pros and cons of using an external DHCP service like uh, Infoblox as opposed to trying to use the software um, product within OpenStack? You are asking what, ex what software is being used for the external No, is, what are the pros, uh, the positive aspects or the negative aspects of using an external DHCP service like Infoblox as opposed to trying to do it within the software if you're an audit compliant company? Yep. So because the way Neutron works right now does not allow external DHCP to, to be used. It's simply because I think something is changing in Kilo uh, to allow uh, to, to remove security groups for, for instances. Uh, so uh, coming to the, po uh, to the point, Neutron does not allow external DHCP service to be used because of the security group, default security group rules it has that prevents any IP address that other than allocated by the Neutron to be, it will not allow that IP address com communication to the instances. So the advantage is uh, we have, we are going to choose a specific IP address mm -hmm. to an instance. We are going to bend that to the instance. Mm -hmm. And we are going to apply firewall rules and policies based on that IP address rule. Mm -hmm. So it's not possible. By coming to the advantages and disadvantages, I think, I don't know. If you have an existing DSCP server services, and if in Kalo, I think we have uh, the port security that, that we can run a port without any security group, you can leverage that. So, if, so it depends from, an, it may differ from environment to environment. Yeah, thank you. Okay, thank you. Yep. Yeah, I think I, I was expected to talk about that in the compute slide. So I missed that. I don't know why I missed that, because I didn't write a line for that. So actually, the security groups works. No, firewall is different, and security groups are different, basically. So it's just like you have some valuable items, and you, you lock the drawer after keeping the valuable items there. Then if you go out of your home, you also lock the main door. So the firewall is actually the main door, and security group also is your drawer. So security groups are going to basically work on the compute node on the Linux bridge that we create that clearly says what traffic need to be allowed to this specific instance. So the main door of your home is the firewall. Yes, basically. And your room door is the security. Yeah, somewhat. So you are going to tell what are the services that is going to be allowed to this network using a firewall. And using a security group, you are going to say, what are the services that is allowed to this specific instance? Any other questions? East-West firewall, uh, it basically comes into floating IP communication. Correct. between uh, uh, two nodes in the same network. This basically works with security groups only. This firewall is only uh, allows uh, or prevents uh, communication between two private networks. Yep. So following up on the earlier question with DHCP, couldn't the uh, Neutron plugin act as a proxy for a DHCP system within the network, and okay. and then it would know what the address was, so it could use that in its security policy? Okay. Is that something that we're even looking into? It may not work 
Till Juno. I, I realize I'm, okay. I'm asking, is this something that we're examining as a future possibility? Yeah, the, for the DSCP agent, I mean, the security groups is what is creating problems yeah, I, when it comes to DSCP agent. So we are going to allow uh, creating a port that does not have any kind of security groups attached with it, a plain port. If we have that, then we can have any, we can use any external DSCP services for that. Okay. Okay. Thanks for listening. And if you have any questions, I will be available here. Just try, please catch me.